he, along with the agenda okay. recording, is trying to start. He's trying to start. Yeah. Okay, this is the meeting of the Web RTC Working Group on Thursday, September the 19th. Um, a little information about the meeting. We're obviously here, so we know where it is. We will be meeting here both in this room both days. Uh, the agenda and all other meeting info is up on the wiki. Um, these are links to all of the drafts. And I think we'll be getting to almost everything on this list during uh, today's and tomorrow's meeting. Um, we have the slides on the working group wiki, and hopefully everyone has filled in their slides, at least if not for today. Um, please do so for tomorrow. Um, and then uh, we do need a scribe to particularly uh, for decisions that we make so we can track those. Do we have a volunteer? Uh, I can scribe for you. Okay, thank you. Um, where, are you see? Yes. yes. Uh, this will be particularly critical during the features at risk discussion that we'll have uh, this afternoon where we want to uh, figure out. I might, might not describe this. Afternoon. Okay, well then. You say for today. Probably we well, need, we should, it's still Wednesday. <laughs> the rest of the world. Yeah, we probably should get another volunteer to help. Uh, yeah, once you're ready to get started, find someone else. Okay, we'll find someone else then. All right. Okay, so this is the agenda for this morning. Uh, we'll have Harold talk about the state of Weber GC and then Dr. Alex, who is not here yet. Uh, we'll talk about testing. We'll then go over some web RTC PC issues and next steps to PR. And then uh, Yanni Bar will talk about capture and then lead a capture session. And then we'll have lunch. So I'm going to turn this over to uh, actually, let me just talk a little bit about uh, this afternoon. Um, Varun and Hamrick will have a a long session on RC stats. Hopefully, it can all get done in an hour. If not, we'll do, give you time tomorrow. Okay. Um, and then, how we'll talk about content hints. We have a presentation from Peter on RC ICE and some discussion of the SCP cross priority stuff. Um, and then, a, a features at risk discussion uh, that Jan Ivar will lead. And then, from 4 30, 5 30, uh, we're going to have a bunch of RC developers give us feedback on what we've been doing. Uh, and hopefully they'll all, they'll all get their slides done. And then Friday is for more forward-thinking things. We'll have, uh, uh, Clara and I will be talking about scalable video coding. We have a privacy session with Ping from 9.15 to 10 that UN will lead, and there'll probably be a lot of Ping people here, UN. So, yeah, so uh, if we have privacy things, we should probably move it to UN session. Um, so we'll have Ping in the room. Well, a short session on the use cases, and then uh, talking about recharter. And then in the afternoon, we have a, a meeting with the Accessibility Platform Architectures Group where they'll talk about accessibility use cases. Um, throughout all this, we have two sessions, empty sessions, potentially we can reuse. So uh, we will try to be very time efficient, so we may cut things off. Uh, but if something needs more time, we can allocate it into one of the Friday, uh, one of those Friday sessions. And then Harold will do the wrap up at the focus. Okay, Harold, uh, state of the, of the WebRC Working Group. Yes, thank you. And uh, the thing is, we're here. That's important. So, Einstein, what we're chartered to do, and uh, the WTC's uh, leadership is very eager to have us do, is to finish WebRTC 1.0. By finish, we mean to get, get at least get it to PR, according to the Current rules of uh, PR. I mean, waiting for the rules to change is not the strategy I would recommend. Um, the charter also says that, that we should define an object oriented API based on the work to see, describe requirements for your new use cases, and address them. It seems that uh, somewhat unrealistic that we will be done with all these items to, until March next year. Is that when the charter ends up? Yes. 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 So, and there's a slight dissonance between what the charter says that we will do and what, where we are. That's normal, unfortunately. Next slide. But uh, there's a, also a dissonance between what the environment demands of us or of whoever they demand such things of. 
I mean, people now expect Weber to see 1.0 to just work. As in uh, consistently across all browsers, everywhere, all the time, in all networks. They do also expect us to deliver some way of effectively, efficiently and effectively getting at low-level low data for all sorts of use cases. The funny hats one and enter encryption and all that stuff. And, uh, and so we got suggestions for those uh, but, not, but not in uh, this group at this moment. But the pressure of, on the so what we call son of RTC has decreased, as in people are not yelling about it anymore. But the people who want specific pieces have spun out those things in separate efforts. Either uh, because they were tired of waiting for us to do something, or because they thought that they could do better on their own. The web transport and web code are the most obvious initiatives. So, going to the to the specs, media capture and streams uh, document as uh, and someone mentioned over breakfast that uh, the web comps were the web comps from last year, but I have now updated them so uh, this year's. Uh, 26 open issues, most of which are old, some of which are ancient. It means that, well, bugs seem to come in, come in two categories. There are bugs that are easy to fix, and we have fixed a lot of those. And there are bugs that really require some heavy thinking, and they tend to stick around. So we, we do need to go through this and say, no. This is done, 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 or stop, stop thinking about that. It requires too much redesign or whatever. So, but we do have an interoperability matrix. Shall we pull that up just for fun? Can you please the link? Um, the link. Oh, okay, sure. That, uh, that kind of shows that uh, yes, three quarters of the browsers are doing just fine for any value of three quarters. Uh, <laughs> so, Yamiva will go, be going into that uh, later. The green stuff is everything's fine, and uh, the red stuff is nothing is nothing is fine. And yeah, and there's, there's a lot lot of green this year. Yeah, we we also know that we still need to cover some more uh, parts of the spec in these tests. Or in oh, yes. tests. But the community sense seems to be that media capture and stream. Yeah, you can. You can capture video on the audio. See what's needed. So it works. So always another concept. So, uh, it's not too bad. But they did promise that we will have a full presentation and book a team and it's no longer before it's no longer since a team. So yeah. Yeah. In some sufficient that we need to identify the 
Such an open box total, so right. it's not a huge list. Right. And the main thing we haven't done for that one is uh, the full horizontal review, so right. And because it has some interesting security implications, that might lead to some. So I guess for the notes, it's say for CR, we're missing the horizontal review, uh, but we should have all the CR blocking, hopefully, as a goal, all CR blocking books completed by the end of the year. We did get stack review on that one, right? Uh, did we? No. I don't think we did. I don't, I don't think we did. No. I think we. We asked for it. Oh, I think but we did ask for it. So. Yeah, we did. We asked for it, right? Yeah, we, um, uh, it came back with these big out the questionnaires. So no. Oh. Okay. Well, we didn't really ask. Oh, we didn't really ask. It was not a well formed request. Okay, so actually, please put that down in the notes. We didn't fill out our tech form. That's Oops. not great. Oops. And the only CR blocking is the time capture, which we'll, which we'll talk about. Right. Okay. So the idea is to say that at the end of the face to face, we say, yeah, we want to transition to CR, or we, okay. we just want to finish the issues, and then there will be another step to decide. Well, I think we'll have hopefully address all the CR blocking issues. So, handing the things we noted, which is we don't need a tag review for CR, right? Oh, yeah. we, we do. We do. We do. Yeah. Okay, so we have to get the tag review. And the security. So we'll send out the request for the for, for wide review after the feedback. After well, but we need to get someone to do the yes. security questionnaire. And the tag review, the first attempt came back with uh, an explainer request. Right. Okay, so we need actually, can you add that in? We need an explainer as well. And I think we need maybe. Mm. A strong word, but at least we need to put it in a, in a easier to grasp context. Time came back with a request for an explainer that is on the to be used. Okay, you need an explainer for the library. Yeah. Okay. All right. The next, the big one, WebRTC 1.0. And the recommendation with, uh, um, you can say that uh, <coughs> that this is a very old slide. Um, two open issues, and uh, half of them are in more than three months, which shows that, shows that there's significant churn in open issues. 
when people keep filing them, Yaniva, why are you filing them? <laughs> <I'm> sorry. <laughs> yeah. Well, Yaniva is probably the best of the cream of the crop of the issues. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Both generating and so. Right, then, yeah, they actually get solved. Yeah, it's a little bit of a practical six months. No more stats. I should say, among this 32, also 15 editorial. Editorial, so. right. Yeah. yeah, we'll talk about more about this in the Web Register CPC <laughs> session, but you know, they're looking at the editorials plus the ones that have PR. Uh, ready for review. It's like it's almost you know twenty five, I think, out of the thirty two. So there's there's not a lot of that. So the so the sense of the of the editing team is that we're stabilizing the books are becoming smaller. The the biggest uh, the biggest set of changes that were done recently was because the yeah, Aniva uh, did, did this article called Perfect Negotiation. And we stared at it for three months and then said, oh shit, yeah, we have to do it. So we did. Uh, so uh, community sense is probably that are we usable yet? Uh, yeah. I, I wouldn't say not usable. I no, would say right. usable but frustrating. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll, get, we'll, get, we'll get into that from the developer. <laughs> Something along those lines. The sense oh, okay. from the community is that all those metrics are, are quantitative, but there is only a very small number of things that are impacting a lot. So maybe out of, I don't know, we're testing up to third, maybe we're passing to third of the test, but there's maybe like the plan B unified plan seems to be one of the right, things that is that. on the road of the real usability. So I think there are. I think feedback and prioritize the work. Say, well, the community is happy even though if you count all the bugs or tests as being equal, we still have a, a certain number. It doesn't look like he impacts the usage of the other And there are a few things that Yami Bar will talk about and these features at risk. There are a few features at risk that people really need to think about. Okay. Mm. And, uh, and we did promise to get it. Um, to PR in QP and this is Q3. And Q3 is ending in a few days. Okay. Okay. Yeah, sure. Yeah. 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 Um, so, should we decide when you target there or too early? <laughs> and yeah, I think, I think we'll, we'll uh, come back to that at, to, uh, at the end of tomorrow. March. Yeah, so, so today we're hoping we'll go through all of the features at risk and also the developer feedback. So hopefully at the end of the, at the, end of the day, we should have a better sense of mm -hmm. So next slide is the problem child, which is uh, identity. The newest issue on identity is from 2017. That's not the good news. <laughs> and uh, the bug count is exactly the same as last year, but it has come up by one, which surprised me because they have, it's still two years old. Yeah. So somehow a, a, a new two-year-old bug has, has appeared in the country. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. mm. And we're not, we, we don't have a separate test suite for it. Um, it, it looks like there is a, a separate folder yeah. in WPT, so is I think that statement yeah. might not be accurate. Is there, is there anything in it? I haven't checked, yeah, but the, the folder exists, <laughs> and it's separated, and there is 22 tests. Yeah, I think we decided to move. Yeah, yeah, there, there was, I think, one test that was specific to identity, which... <laughs> so, so, I'm, you can, so I'm changing that there has been. So one element of progress on the slide, which is different, is the not just taken off. Not, it's been separated. Yeah. One so word progress. One word progress. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I've updated this slide. So um, we have three tests or about to say that. So if, if you if you go back no, and no, no, forward, no, there is back and forward on this uh, day, uh, I mean, okay. there can be three files. Uh, yeah. There is 22 separate different tests. Yeah. Well, probably Firefox has the same. Uh, Chrome pass three and uh, pass three, Firefox <laughs> 11 and crash. Yeah. Other than Firefox, three times more than everybody else. Well, uh, Firefox implemented this. Right. <laughs> 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 
So Samson, so Samson the community is that there's not that not much been happening yet. Either on the spec side or on the engineering side. I think the last effort was the hackathon we did in London. Yes. Right. And that was about it. Yeah. Well, that's where I, where I come through that it should be possible to shim this in a couple of uh, days at work. But um, then, um, I need mean, anyone else actually did it. So that's that one I don't know what uh, how to make progress on. Next slide. If you look at who is the resources available, uh, well this slide is old. Yeah, we have to take Yanni Bar off now, you're a chair. Doesn't mean you can't do editing, but <laughs> So, uh, is that, am I the only editor then? You don't have enough minus to get done to the. Yeah, I think, I think you're it. I think you're our only call. Getting consensus could be easy then. And you're not supposed to find consensus among editors. <laughs> uh, so, Yanira continues to write, uh, which is good. You must check. And uh, yeah, other drafts are managed by other editors. To, and we have an ongoing canvassing to, to get more people to sign up to do editing. But uh, keep them busy. So just a bit of a slide, then uh, next slide. Uh, where your sources come from, which is, yeah, people are motivated by stuff they care about, and organizations <laughs> sponsor people that to get stuff done they care about, which means if you know, if you want to get things done, we have to ask the people to care to get it done, and. We have to separate to keep a balance of work of uh, inventing new stuff and polishing the old ones. I mean, if we only polish our old stuff, then the only people left in the group are the people who like polishing. Those aren't very many. But we do need to have. In order to get a, a stable basis to build new features on, we do need to have the contributions of of people who know what know how to do things right in what's easily taken as polishing. Yeah. So we basically have to finish, and we have to find the resources. And we don't have that many. You and aren't you supposed to be listed as editor or something? Excuse me? Aren't you editor? Uh, I don't think I'm an editor. Did you didn't know you were editor? <laughs> <laughs> well, now you know. Why don't we, why don't we uh, add, add you in on this list of two editors? So at least we have two instead of just one. Yeah, that's embarrassing. We yeah, actually need to agree. To <laughs> <laughs> we, need, we need his agreement? <laughs> and then we try. I've played in the slides, and now it's the truth. So, that's the. We're now on the slides. So yeah. It's a fact. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, will, I will not uh, describe it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> So if you accept being editor, we can release you from having? No, it doesn't work that way. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. So uh, you can tell that uh, I was slightly late in updating the slides. And, and uh, so I captured documents. Nobody seems to have worried much about it recently. But it is implemented, right? Oh, yes. It's yeah. working. So and it's, uh, yeah. it's been just, just checking along. So I hope it's done. 
So we should move this to CTR. Yeah. Yeah. I think yes. one issue though is if we don't have an editor, then all the work that needs to happen in terms of right. privacy review and stuff. Yeah, I think that's so, the issue. Who's the editor on that? Was that one of the ones Martin was doing? No. Capture, Capture from, from, from the management. The one where you get the media stream for Canvas or from yeah, the Okay. Mm -hmm. That's the kind of thing that we use all the time in all, all sorts of cases, and it just works. But Martin, someone needs to. Miguel. Okay, so it's Martin Miguel. So actually, uh, and Miguel, Miguel and Mikan have left that project, I believe. Okay, uh, Martin, Martin is the Martin. Okay, so uh, what should we put down as the next steps here? I know that. Okay. I think it's accurate to say heavy use, or yes, it? yes. Okay. Uh, so there are nineteen of them. Although most of them are unknown. Uh, where is it in terms of uh, things like uh, tag and? We didn't. So we have uh, an April two thousand seventeen issue titled "Field Security and Privacy Questionnaire." Okay, so uh, need uh, privacy, security, <laughs> tag review, but are there any, there's no CR blocking issues though, right? Someone would have to, okay. I mean, there, again, there are 19 open issues, but there, okay. there are V1 or not, CR or not, I don't know. Okay, all right. So we, we need to screen all the bugs and check whether they see out. Yeah, I mean, some of them are actually process oriented. Like the, I mean, basically, we need someone to fill on our shift. Yeah. Um, can we make the same issues about the uh, same comments about recorder? Yes. Okay. So that also needs tag review, right? Yes, I think so. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I would say, given, given the feedback we're getting and we call our, I think the tag review may come back and tell us you need to do a better job. Right. Yeah, we actually have some PRs and issues to discuss. Um, okay. And the steps identifying document is also active. Some of us are hyperactive. Hyperactive. <laughs> <laughs> so, so for all of these, we, we do not have a. Um, a deadline, so we could decide to <coughs> never ship a rack and go with a new way of doing things as well. Um, uh, that seems a bit risky because I don't know that the new way of doing things, I mean, the new way of doing, doing things actually still requires you to go through a wide review and stuff, so it's not that. So, so we still need that in each other, so no matter what. Sure, sure. All the, all the things that need to be done still need to be done. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Next slide. So, documents that have been very quiet recently. Death. Is that is anybody still working on that? And, and one of the two guys was mentioning it uh, yes. uh, uh, on Wednesday. So yeah, yeah. They, they they I expect it to come back. I, I think for him is job done. He passed on then to PTZ and did other stuff after that, but I don't think he, uh, he came back and updated this group. It may be worth to have someone ping him. So, so it's job done, but from the Intel perspective, we're shipping it or we're in shipping it as a Chrome, Chrome, it's, Chrome it's, it's, it's shipping in Chrome behind the flag, right? As, okay. as you can enable this feature and God knows what will happen. It's not. It's not done by any sense of yeah, it. It's on the standard side, yeah. For them, it's it's in problem, it's cheap. The way presented <coughs> even today was like. Yeah. So, all the output devices? Yeah. I was curious on that one in terms of implementation. So it's in Chrome. It's in Chrome. It's in Chrome. Uh, is it going to land in Firefox anytime soon? Do you know, Yuri? Oh, yeah. um, uh, it's behind the press, and uh, we're waiting. For, we're doing a refactor internally on the stack uh, to, and we do have plans to 
essentially there's some open questions about permission um, if we want to, right. to work with non uh, with RTC non camera stuff right. and uh, in that case but that's but apparently what's wrong I think we were we plan to do at least. And in terms of the spec, it has the same no tag review yet, no privacy screen. No, it's already in CR. Oh, it's on CR. It's actually pretty advanced compared to some of the other stuff. You and there are any issues you can see? Um, it's, it's in the radar. It's something we, we think we used, often we implemented, but uh, there's, no, there's no concrete plan yet. Um, We'll talk a little bit about about it on Friday. Uh, uh, since, <laughs> yeah, since there, there's a potential for improving a little bit of things there. Um, so let's see. So we've got common hints, uh, which is uh, and we put the stuff into Chrome and shift it and there's there's much usage. Which Bernard tells me is going to increase dramatically in a time now because the Skype started using it. And yeah. I need to delete this minor here. So it, it's released in Chromium, I guess. Yeah. yeah. And it seems working, but it's working. And it means it's a working but We were using it for screen sharing, and in that context, did it work? Mm -hmm. But yes, it's just a working draft, and even if you just the first group. So if we got that on the agenda, actually, we'll discuss it. Yeah. We've got DSCP, which uh, nobody's uh, written code for. Well, is there no, there was some support in Chrome, right? And yeah, there's a, there's a lower layer support for, uh, at the C++ layer, and we had right. some experiments running <laughs> and, uh, to see what, what happens if you turn this on. But uh, the, the, according to Justin, the experiments consistently show that uh, things got worse. Oh, worse. <laughs> worse. <laughs> yeah, because the enterprise, they often black hole the stuff. If they see a code point, they don't understand, so it can make Oh, but I mean, that wasn't tested in a like, friendly environment? No. Well, enterprise environments aren't generally friendly. Well, I'm saying, like, in iOS, you can set up some apps as getting Dedicated QIs in private networks. Like an orange and trial. Anyway, I think Harold has a session which yeah. I guess you yeah. could talk more about what exactly was that. So one one interesting thing that came up was that so if we want to reevaluate the whole concept of priority at <laughs> the API level, you could take priority out of uh, WebRTC PC and put it together here so that we, we have all the priority stuff in one place. It would make more sense document wise and implementation wise. But uh, uh, whether DSP, how to uh, use DSP in only places where it's useful, that's uh, probably an idea. Right? Or something we need, we need to consult with the idea of what. Yeah, we're going to have some developer feedback on this issue as well. A couple of developers have uh, noted some issues with DSP, so maybe we'll learn something. So we got the uh, WebRTC SEC spec, which I sent out an intent to implement on after having actually implemented the spec uh, during a hackathon at IDEA. That was fun. So uh, I don't have an intent to ship yet, and uh, we have to figure out exactly what modes for model support and what the plumbing is for that. Details, details, details. But, uh, it does actually interest, I would say. And it wasn't part of it. And uh, WebRTC is implemented in Chrome. Uh, was implemented as part of the, or most of it at least, was implemented as part of part of the WebRTC Quick uh, experiment. And uh, then I took the implementation and put it, or we took the implementation and put it inside WebRTC PC just because it was there. And uh, so now it's uh, it's available. And it seems to work. I, I, mean, I haven't some tried to say the basic thing. I haven't tried tried the, doing the advanced stuff with the with the stuff that 
es el nuevo ejercicio. Y sí, ya está. So that one we haven't even published at the first when we talk about. Uh, right. I guess Peter has a session that will talk about uh, the status of it. Um, and he's looking to add more functionality to it, but yeah, it's still. Mm -hmm. pushing, pushing it out of the working job seems. All documents should be either killed or finished. And that one mm -hmm. is, it seems so likely to be worth finishing. But time scale is a different problem. <coughs> and next slide. There's stuff going on that is relevant to what we're doing. Web code and web transport are kind of the highest, highest on my list of things to watch. Uh, but we also have time text, media timed event, that I couldn't quite figure out what was. And of course, we have security and privacy both in general and in specific, so that we, we have to watch I mean, the biggest scheduling problem for me is that this, this feedback is that me, the media working group is scheduled opposite this, work, this working group, which means that uh, I don't get to, get to go, go see what the media group are, are doing, because I think they're very relevant. Mm -hmm. So that's uh, so that, uh, I put that on the slide. Uh, so the attention focus for this meeting, next slide, is finish 1.0 and figure out how to get the bugs result and uh, verify that we have conformance and interrupt. That's Dr. Alex's uh, presentation. We do have to look at the new APIs, figure out use cases and requirements because without the use, without without the use case, we're yeah, we're just uh, doing things because they're cool, and that's cool sometimes, but uh, it's not necessarily solving a problem. And we have to attend the raw media. Mm -hmm. Either in this group or outside this group, but it has to be done. So that was the status of the group. Anything I did forgot to mention? And, and anyone remembers something that I forgot to mention? So there's still a lot of stuff. That's my understanding. There's a lot of stuff. <clears throat> yeah, but if you compare to TPAC and Neon last year, last year the big fear was simulcast. It was really like, okay, we have a long time, we don't know how it is and how much work it's going to be. It looks like that's not the biggest fear today right. that's under control. Even though there is still death by 1,000 cuts, yes. it's yeah, small exactly. cuts and not a big long time. Yeah. 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 So, so simulcast doesn't seem to be a huge problem anymore, especially with the redesign of stats. We kind of we got something that uh, we think well, is we can talk more about the communication right. status. <laughs> yeah. So I think we're done with that session, and then we have you, uh, Dr. Alex. Are your slides now over there? Yeah, you have access. I'll share them with you. Okay. Uh, oh, so they're not in the main, the main deck. Okay. Uh, Uh, hmm. I'm not seeing. Okay. Future person. Yeah. yeah. Um, actually, if you can just drop them in, can you drop them into the deck? And I can just... Okay. What is that? Yes. Okay. Do that.
like 2019 agenda? Uh, no, in the, the slides. Uh, there's a link from the wiki to the wiki uh, to the slides. Yeah. Uh, not that, no, the second one. Yeah. And uh, yeah, uh, and then the link to the slides from the wiki. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you and me. Oh, um, okay, I can show you. Wait, 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 So you added it in your version and it's not propagated yet, is it? No, I'm going to get there. Okay. I've done it on Google. So when which link should I insert it? Uh, after like, your name, no SEC test status. It's uh, 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 slide twenty one. Uh, yeah. So after that one. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Oh, there we go. Okay. This way there will be some stuff. Okay. That's okay. Here we go. Um, right. So go ahead. Um, that was the, the status at TPAC 2017. So that's a subject that I think very important. We have a lot of tests, but we don't know how much of the spec we have to be testing. So in Lisbon, uh, we had the joy to go through the test line by line and to manually take all the lines in the spec to try to get coverage uh, and to get a feeling about how much we were covering. And that was the first time we actually had a shock at the, how little we were actually covering. There were 200 tests all in all for all the media capture and so on. And that was like less than 10%. So in 2018, next slide, we put into place um, some kind of coverage uh, script and we modified a little bit the uh, process of the spec to be able to tag in the spec and extract that automatically. So, um, and then the WPT was taken over by another group that did something different and never put the, the coverage back in. But you can see that between this one in 2016 and 2017, we added roughly 1,000 text, tests and we were reaching 70% coverage of the specs that gave us confidence as a group to report back to the W3C that it was tested in. Uh, since then, the WPT removed the, uh, this capacity, so we're a little bit blind, and today we don't really know uh, what we don't know. So actually, <clears throat> a few weeks ago, we merged this system I put in place based on the work that was started at the IETF Pakistan. Mm -hmm. So now when you go to the spec, if you... So there is a new way now again, but it's pretty recent then. Yeah, it is recent. Okay, so we need to put that back and 
Uh, I think that was one of the difficulties was to say, oh, do we test enough? We actually do not have a, a coverage. So now you, you have a better system. So yeah, if you go to the respect pill at the top of the document and you toggle yeah. test annotations. So I will, work, I will work with you to integrate that into my report for the next time. Make plenty Maybe of Maybe you're coming to Singapore for the next idea? I'm um, not. Uh, OK. When is it? November 15. So you've been in the call in France? It is so much better. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, I'll work with you and I'll make sure to bring that back. That's really one, I think, for me, the biggest point of progress when reporting into the state of, uh, of testing. Uh, next. But the number of tests went up from uh, 1,300 to 1,500, so that's great. That's what the that was the situation uh, last year in uh, Lyon. Um, so the WPT was testing most of the most recent desktop version of the browsers, but unfortunately, uh, the number of tests that were passing across all the four browsers was zero. Mm -hmm. So you can look at the bottom, this is a different view, which is how many tests work from the left to the right on only one, on zero browsers, on only one, only two, only three, and only four. Right. And you can see the four column, which is where we should be eventually, was a complete zero. So thanks God it was not red, right? It was white, so it doesn't jump in the face, but that was not good. So big progress there, it's not good. Um, this year, um, we have more tests and also better tests in the sense that they're more separated. So we decided to have last year one a folder per spec. This is not done even for identity. Um, next, more tests and better separated, and also uh, much more passing tests. So I put for comparison 2018 on the top and 2019 on the bottom and try to align the columns, even though there's more lines, not more lines on the, in 2019. And you can see that the number of tests that passed uh, on all the four browsers on the right hand side is much higher much, much, much higher. We have almost 50% of the tests that work on all the browsers, so that shows a, a convergence of the implementation, and that shows that the WPT is uh, uh, doing its job as showing us you know, where, where we stand. So, so we can see a lot of migration from the left to the right, and eventually we want everything on the bottom. Am I right to read this as only two, I mean, 250 tests pass in less than one? Less than two brothers. I cannot even read from there, but let me look at my slide. <laughs> um, so, what's your question? Only? Only 250 tests pass in less than two browsers. It's cumulative, right? right. So, this, if I want to have that, I'm sorry, the, the sum of the two first one. So, if you want all the tests that pass in less than two browsers, you have to take zero, the, the number in the zero column plus the number in the one column okay. plus the well, no, not plus uh, no, 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 no. It's, uh, two hundred. Okay. So it's, it's pretty good. So I was looking at the WebRTC PC spec, for example, which is the first line on the on the second on the bottom part, and it's six hundred, uh, almost seven hundred out of fifteen, and uh, that's that's pretty good. It was zero one year ago, right? so we, we went a long way there. So actually, I'm I'm looking at this and I'm seeing from things that have zero support in browsers, right? We went from 509 in 2018 to 125. For web, yes. pure WebRTC, yes. Yes, so that's a pretty big improvement. Yes. Yeah. No, that's, that's really good quantitatively speaking. Again, the perception might be different than the number from the community because not everybody is using the entire set and is well, perceiving the value. In 2018, they couldn't even get to the point where they could complain. <laughs> Very good. I'm not complaining. I'm not using it. Uh, okay, that's the next slide. Um, the WPT uh, dashboard is, is improving a little bit, a little bit less of red. Uh, this is one le level down. So if you click on WebRTC, this is the detail of all the tests. Next slide. And if you go even one level down, uh, no, so. We'll go there later. So the comparison between uh, the WPT dashboard and the WPT run with Kite in 2018 was that Kite can run the mobile browser. 
Uh, we did actually an extension of Kite to be able to submit to the WPT dashboard the results to complement theirs. It hasn't been adopted yet uh, for a year now. So for the time being, the only visibility on the mobile browser comes from our dashboard. Um, next slide. Is WPT.Kite uh, no, I have a link. It's uh, dashboard.cosmo. It's at the bottom of one of these slides, so you can you can check later. And in terms of uh, error and loading, this is what you get in the WPT in the dashboard. So it's it's good to have an uh, an overview. It might be more difficult for uh, uh, an engineer to to act on it and to actually use that to debug because okay, it's difficult. Most developer will run the the WPT themselves manually on the machine anyway. I'm not sure it's a big thing. Next slide. In our case, because we're lazy, we put everything on the on the dashboard. So you have a global number, 66.71% of the test pass across the browser configuration you have listed there. So again, my jet lag I cannot read the screen, so I'm going to pull the slide here. So, yeah, I'm just trying Mac, to... Mac Firefox 69, Windows Firefox 69, Mac Firefox 71, Windows Firefox 71, yeah. Mac Chrome 77, Windows Chrome 77. I have another word. So, you have a link on the bottom here okay. for, the, for the same thing. Uh, this, so one. This, this is just, this is, this is not with the mobile stuff, right? Uh, I have another run, so if you click on the link, there's another run with Android and, and Safari on iOS and so on. And we also put categories there, so that allow, for example, to compare uh, Firefox 69 between Mac and Windows, so you can see the result are slightly different. That allows to compare um, Firefox 69 against Firefox 71, different revision. We put some category on the site to see which one we're embedding because of the track problem or stream problem or the media problem, so that the load to dispatch to the right people in different. So you, you're categorizing uh, sources of non interoperability that, that you're... Yeah, so that's all the filling. Well, here I filter, I just put the filling one, right? right? But right. with that category that correspond uh, less to the spec and more to a working area or a specific engineer. In so that's a manual annotation that for the time being, yes, that's a lead value on the dashboard. So next slide. Um, and then if you click on it, we want to need actionable. So on the top right hand, uh, you cannot really see, but for example, the green part, I click on it, so it's inverted. So you don't see the, the test that passed, those are boring. You only see the failure. Uh, you have the configuration on the bottom left. So here I chose Android uh, Chrome 77, for example, that's the Android. Uh, and I, I click on one of the tests, so I run the test by the slowest to the fastest to fill. Um, and if I click on this one on the right hand side, then I have the complete description of the failure with the copy of the console log uh, on the error and everything. So that becomes much more actionable for, for developer. So they actually you see are not imported into Android? Uh, totally random. I just okay. click on the first one. I rank them by time. So you see the, the time report on the, the timestamp, how long that, that, that test took to run. So I could run, for example, all this configuration in the entire WPT in one hour in a, in a distributed Selenium grid. Um, here I decided to run them not by name or not by name, my number of uh, mistakes, but by time. And then I look at the log on the right and I decide uh, how, how to act on it. So that's publicly available in the open source kite code for those who want that. Next slide. So something that the WPT cannot do is of course simulcast or whether it's P2P or SFU. And that was the, the, the biggest concern last year. So the AppRTC allowed us to integrate uh, Edge at the time and uh, the UWP builds uh, to compare across. We need to have the same app to compare what is comparable. And then for simulcast, we need to have SFU. So Bernard was quick to point that uh, most people don't come back and say, I have an SFU problem. They say, I have a Janus problem. I have a Medus problem. I have a Curento problem and so on and so forth. Since there is not a complete set of specification on the SFU side, but the WebRTC 1.0 depends on the behavior of the SFU, we worked a lot with everybody to actually come with tests that could test 
different SFU against the browser. So next, next right. one. Uh, so we did that in the context of the IETF hackathon <laughs> because first the critical mass was there. Most of the open source were about the CSFU developer were there. Most of the browser vendors were there, and it's times we were in different locations, so eventually everybody can attend once. Um, the 104 was uh, really successful. Uh, we provided an open source SFU that was working in loopback setting with uh, different mode for plan B, unified plan, and all these uh, compliance testing with a lean and mean mode that allowed to uh, be test really, really full compliance instead of testing feature. So how did you do it? Um, so there was that the other thing. We provided a test with Meduse. Next slide. Um, yeah, I'll really look like that one year ago. Um, different layer selection manually, automatically, and so on. We provided next slide another test with Janus. Next slide. So the, the test is not important. It's to you can find that in the IETF wiki. It's just to show that the same test in the same condition was done uh, against different SFU, and then using Kite you run it against all the browser configuration, and then you could have a real view of who stands where in terms of uh, simulcast report, which was the biggest question last year at TPAC and Yum. Um, so media soup, so that was interesting. All the open source media server were involved, so that was great. Even those that couldn't attend, like media soup, managed to provide some <laughs> tests to have people test against their SFU and, and, and surface the bugs. So really good. Next one. Uh, biggest we're about to see accession ever. Even uh, Montreal was not that big. I think Prague, yeah, a little bit the location and everything. Uh, and we found 15 bugs uh, during the session. 12 of them were fixed by the end of the two days, right? So the capacity to have the browser vendors and the SFU vendor, everybody controlling all the color on the table, but very, very, and, and the right tool to test was very successful. So next. Um, we ended up as a deliverable with a browser support card. So horizontally, you have all the different things that could impact at this stage uh, uh, the simulcast, including some ITF items and some WFC items. And then vertically, you have the different uh, SFU uh, browser, sorry, for this one. And everything was validated by each of the browser vendor that was there. I mean, when I say something, it's not working in Firefox. Firefox agreed to say, yes, it's not working. It's not, you know, there is no bad moving here. Niels was there. And the name of the people who bet it is written on the bottom, so they're responsible for that, right? <laughs> Next slide. Uh, I'm still trying to understand this status report. Um, so, uh, yes. Uh, so, okay, so there's some stats work, which I think Henrik will be talking about. Uh, yes. And just kind of understand what's... So most of the people were, were in the middle of the transition between the old school, signal cast, plan B, SDT managing, and so on and so forth. And the new school signal cast with the transceiver, sender, receiver API, and no SDT managing, and not, no SSRC, the RID and all that. So there were a lot of things in flux that needed to be there. And all kind of different combination existed at the time. So you can see that between prompt stable and prompt 75, which was Canary at the time, you already had a big change between what was supported. So you have, for the W3C, do you have the RTP, RTC transceiver object? Do you have the stat API, the new one? Do you have the capacity to enable simulcast, which means uh, the, the special create offer and so on and so forth. Right? So there are some, I don't know that in this case, there are some. Sorry, there's no problem, sorry. Oh. Um, there are some, uh, there are some entries which have a yes with a, a red yes. Well, if you still support something legacy, you can argue whether you need something or not, oh, right? Okay. So the, the definition of compliance is do you support the spec as it is today? You can still be backward compatible, whether that's good or bad is a, is a, it's question of opinion and interpretation. So the big red and the big uh, yes is compliant with the spec as it was at that time. Okay. And the orange was, do you still want to accommodate for things you should not accommodate? Okay. So this is basically just an implement. It's not an interop slide. This is a, a 
applications. On yes, this one. browser support card, right? Okay. Where do we stand? And I think that was what what Harold wanted to see, right? From out, out there, is what we supposed to implement. That is it actually usable, right? And that's where uh, but the problem is you also need on the SFU side the, the, the pending implementation. So then we go to the next slide, which is uh, uh, the SFU. So you have the full, which is on top of, on the right without color, because I didn't want to tell opinion. A lot of people behave uh, very badly when you tell them that baby is ugly. They tell you uh, it's, not a, it's not a bug, it's a feature. So this is an SFU report card. That's it's an SFU feature report, report card. Card. And it's a compliance report. So green doesn't mean your SFU is better. You just mean it's compliant to the, to the latest spec. And some people will tell you, I'm fine with not being compliant with the latest spec. I want to be able to operate with the current browser as it is. Right? So that's the house. Gustavo, for example, was very, very vocal about that. He said, I'm all right, but that's what I want. Fine. While well, some other people like to experiment, so Sergio, Lorenzo, Inaki, the usual suspect, they want to be bleeding edge, even if they're bleeding a lot. Uh, and so they, they, they're more there. So the color just means compliance, not, it's not a, a quality assessment. But that allows us to know, again, to, if you want to test against the latest spec, which SFU should you use, right? Because if they don't support the uh, unified plan negotiation and you want to test unified right. plan, it's, it's useless. So we, we right. need both sides. Yeah. Okay. Um, next slide. So that was 104. So I'm still just trying to understand this. So basically, what, what this slide says is that the news Janus and Media Suit spend some effort to work with the current WebRC 10CR, but other SFUs like Jitsi and House Party basically do not work with the 10CR. Is that right? Uh, they were not at that time. Uh, at that time. Uh, at the time we did the test. It's, it was 104, so it's been a little bit of time. We tried to upgrade this table. Every at every IETF, and we try to bring more people. Um, so, in, in a few slides, I will speak about uh, Montreal and, and Singapore, what we plan like to do. But the idea is to have all the browser and more and more SFU to test against to, to have a complete map of, uh, of the support. Right. So, an example of a funny bug we found. The bandwidth allocation bug, so uh, we, we, you have the link to the test and all the configuration to reproduce. It was a, a Chrome bug, um, and basically it was expecting you to provide the single cast layer from the high resolution to the lowest resolution. And it was allocating the bandwidth accordingly. So if you were providing the layers in a random order or the lower resolution first and the higher resolution after, while well, your lower resolution stream will get most of the bandwidth available for it, while the higher resolution will be highly constrained to the point where it will reduce the resolution automatically. So that was kind of funny. Um, here, uh, next slide, please. So we, we put some screen share and so on. So we did a little uh, case study and bug report for everybody we found there. So this, one's one, this one was formed thanks to Janus. Uh, um, but it shows how you can find a lot of uh, corner cases that would otherwise be almost impossible to automatically test uh, if you don't have a, a, a test tool that allows you to handle an SFU, different topology, different clients, and stuff like that. Next slide. And that's the last one, right? So in, uh, in 105 in Montreal, it was a small group, but interestingly enough, we managed to get more people to join, new people. So Frozen Mountain, with a uh, sweet live switch um, SFU and MCU join us. They were finishing the implementation of Simulcast, so they managed to do it in the weekend. They managed to find a, a few bugs and so on, and they will add the result of the test against uh, their SFU and MCU in the status report. That allows them to know where they are and where they stand compared to the other one, and that allows the browser to test against them automatically, so to, to provide better support. Uh, in Singapore, Intel is going to join. So last year in Lyon, Intel announced that they were open sourcing the entire uh, test suite and uh, MCU, SFU, and everything. This is done. This is part of the Open Visual Cloud uh, 
push from Intel who goes beyond beyond the RTC, there is transcoding, there is IoT, there is smart city, and so on. The what used to be Intel WebRTC collaboration suite is now uh, called uh, Open WebRTC, OWT, I think they call it. Um, and they're going to join us in Singapore uh, during ITF to actually help integrate some of the tests into Kites. They have a, a, a very good uh, mobile test bed, for example, that they presented at GTAC in 2015 that they want to integrate. And they want their SFU and MCU to be part of the test. So <coughs> Is going to give more coverage of different use cases for the browsers and more visibility for them uh, on that. So, the plan to start it the hackathon with them? So they will be part of the hackathon and uh, there will be some other specific work together with Cosmo during the week to, to integrate that in Kite. Okay. Uh, the local, well, the local day in Shanghai, so it's difficult. It was difficult for them to go to Europe or to go to, um, to Montreal, but. Singapore is easier. Awesome. Uh, they have other stuff. They have a modified WebRTC implementation with support um, of four to six five mm -hmm. with hardware acceleration on Windows, Android, iOS, and so on. They're looking about the right way to merge that in and to test it. At, uh, uh, so that will be at the menu for the hackathon, mm -hmm. uh, the WebRTC hackathon. And the support, I guess, as if you move on. They have uh, both SFU and MCU and SIP gateway. They have uh, you know, a lot of things. And so for everything that does a WebRTC connection, uh, you need to handle all the MC. It's a WebRTC client, right? You need to have the end check, the single link, and the text that the media is streaming, right? Okay. Cool. So that's it. We're going to try to bring more people to test and uh, increase the, the, the coverage. Uh, to help the browser know where it's breaking or what the use cases are, are out there. And we prepared a few uh, tests for the usual suspect for Hangouts, uh, Meet, uh, WebEx that we're going to share publicly. Nice. And uh, if um, the browser vendors need uh, SFU set in to test against and so on, uh, we, can, we can help set it up and everything is open source and free. So let's make it happen. So as a result of all that, I don't think uh, Simulcast is as big uh, a concern this year that it was last year. I don't know, but I don't know, Harold, you were the one concerned last year, what do you feel? Yeah, um, I mean, so I'll talk about it a little bit more uh, in, in a few minutes. But uh, um, what I'd like to suggest is that since we had all that great test discussion, um, that we move the next steps to PR. Okay. Basically, Alex, covered uh, half the slides I was going to okay. present anyway. Oh. So let me just finish the other ones, mm -hmm. and then we can take a break uh, and uh, try to get, get back on the schedule, if that makes sense. OK, so uh, I think this is good, because we've gone through all the test status and the basic status of the group. So uh, this item is to discuss the next steps to PR for our And uh, Go over the requirements for PR again. Uh, basically, must show adequate implementation experience, and then uh, uh, have the wide review. Um, uh, address the issues raised during the CR review period. Uh, identify substantive issues since the close of that, and then uh, need to remove features. So, um, just. So we, we just talked about some of the implementation experience. I will talk about that some more. I have a over that. Uh, we will be going over the features at risk uh, and we'll cover those. Um, so just want to make sure we understand uh, where we are and what the obstacles are to getting the PR. So um, Harold talked about some of this. Uh, we currently have, I guess, 32 issues, but most of those are either editorial or PR exists. Um, and then we have five that we're going to talk about after the break um, to with some interaction. So overall, I think this picture looks pretty good in terms of the issues on WebRTCPC, at least from the spec point of view, not talking about implementation. In terms of issue velocity, we had eight new issues last month, and then we fixed nine. So we're roughly keeping, keeping up with them um, and, and slowly uh, addressing them. Um, and so if we actually do what we say we're going to do on this agenda, which is to address uh, existing PRs, uh, the five issues, you know, would be less, potentially less than five non-editorial issues. So we're not doing that badly from the issue side on WebRTCPC. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. Um, now, in terms of simulcast, I think we had uh, spec issues when we talked about it in TPAC 2018. There are no issues labeled simulcast remaining. So I think from a spec point of view, we have done our job um, and made very good progress since last year. Um, there are a few implementation gaps and differences. Um, here's where I think we are. We have max frame rate, which is a feature risk. That is one of the kind of simulcast modes. So that is, uh, isn't implemented yet. Um, we have some differences in simulcast SBC that uh, Dr. Alex talked about. Um, I did want to chat a little bit about support for the RID and mid header extensions. I guess we have the RIDs are in all browsers now, right now, Alex? I think so. Uh, are the mid header extensions being implemented yet? Um, I didn't look I at the RIDs. I don't know. Sorry, do you remember if, if the mid is the mid RTP <laughs> stuff in there yet? It's certainly an SDP. There, there is a lot of uh, SFU that still depend on SSRC anyway. Right. And so yeah. the problem was the, the browser that had the RRD and stuff still were maintaining SSRC until people will not transition. Um, I believe that in Chromium, um, RIT and MIT are implemented in our industry. But oh, do, okay. you, do okay, you still so support it. SSRC or not? I think if you enable simulcast, you will not get SSRCs. Yes, yeah, so that's and the you SDP part. Yes, and you will only uh, emit. Uh, okay. So at least for RTP, we've made, uh, we've got the support now for the RTP stuff, which we did not have in 2018. So that's come along. Uh, so I think this is roughly a summary of where we are in terms of simulcast. Um, so still a, a few little feature risk and some differences in the answers. Which we have the RID header extension. The mid, right, okay. So Chrome has both mid and RID, and Firefox only has RID. Okay, you might want to put that down in the notes. Uh, yeah. Okay, so still a little bit a little bit of extra work on the RTP side to do in the browser. And then there's the uh, little uh, SDP differences there. Um, and Harold had a, put in a draft in the ITF about the SDP portion of this um, as well. Okay, so let's talk about uh, WPT. Basically, I think Alex covered that really, really well. Thank you. Um, as Alex mentioned, there are no WPT tests for simulcast. That's something done in Kite. Um, there was, uh, although basically, uh, the simulcast playground, which was done by FIPO, relied on the SSRC stuff to do kind of a loopback test. Um, but I, have one. I have another one that oh, is okay. working uh, with just a right NMID. Oh, okay. Chrome. So okay. Could, you, could you try to upload it to the WPT? Um, it's a developer-oriented interactive. Uh, we could do some different things, but right now I realize on a hack where you exchange number the um, RTP extension uh, numbers between read and mid. So right. you so that's, that's what you showed me. Yeah, yeah that's what so, I. Showed. Okay, so it's, it's still the limitation is your you testing that you filter react the way you want the input, but. Yeah. You don't have the entire end to end that we yeah. are in SFU in the middle. Right, so right. But in the context of WPT, the, the question is is it a hack that anyone that implements a spec would have to support, or is it something that is common specific? I believe that would be um, following the spec, so we can use that in some tests to do some. That would be very nice. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, but it relies on heavy uh, SDP magic. Which is, which is fine, yeah. Which is um, fine, but it's going to be tricky to make it reliable. Uh, what so, so remember, the the FIPO code in this code is running in a single browser at the time. Right. Mm -hmm. but so there is a limit to what in the WPT context. That's the only thing we can do anyway. Oh, I agree. I agree. It's not a bad thing. I think it's a good addition. It's a good to add. It gives more visibility. It's not enough to test all the stuff. Uh, I, I agree. I mean, it's just that we get the test in the so, okay. so, so I guess this is just something for us to follow up on. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Um, yeah. But as, as, yeah, uh, we got an action on coffees to make it Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> in terms of the overall status, I think Dr. Alex said, uh, much more green than before. Um, and uh, uh, still a few false negatives due to dependencies, but I think le that is definitely less than it was. Uh, now, I won't go over the WPT status, uh, except generally to look at this, it's a lot greener than it used to be. Um, 
so let's talk about confluent status. Uh, basically, um, this is, uh, you know, WPT tests individual browsers. Confluence just tries to give you an idea of how much has been implemented. And Yanni Bear has gone in and he'll talk about this during the features of risk, uh, come down to a, a low, even lower level. But the Confluence, this site maintained by Dom, basically handles methods and objects. And then uh, Yanni Bear is taking that to the next level with the actual attribute support. Um, but just to give you uh, a sense of where we are in terms of overall status, uh, there are a lot fewer features with no implementations. I think Dr. Alex said that that would be corresponding to the zero, right? And browsers, a lot less of that for today. Uh, the object model support is much better. Uh, in, you know, a year ago, at Current Edge was the only browser implementing DTLS transport and edge transport, no longer true. We have an SCTP transport. So just to kind of give you a, a general sense, obviously this is an eye chart, but you can basically just look at the colors. Um, this is RPC Peer Connection. Um, and it is almost all green with the exception of uh, get default ice servers, which Yanni Bar will talk about, on ice candidate error, which just got implemented, um, and the SCTP transport, which Harold uh, did, and it's only currently in one browser. And then uh, for the some of the objects, basically the ice candidate, and we should, I want to talk about this, Yanni Bar, the uh, attributes like foundation, component, and priority are not in there. Um, and I, I don't know. Oh. Basically, they're only in Chrome. <coughs> um, yeah. Uh, Firefox does actually support this, except oh. not in the constructor. So okay, so that's how it got. Correct. That's what I so Okay, so this is actually not really, uh, not really correct. Okay, and for some reason, in the ice uh, ice connection event, uh, there's no URL. I'm not sure why. What? Except except what? Except 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 right. what? What? What did I do right? Right or wrong? <laughs> right. right. Okay, perfect. <laughs> the only one supporting. Yeah, the only one. Oh, really? uh, at get supported algorithms, which Yanni Berger will talk about uh, in uh, features at risk, which nobody did. Um, and then set which is a relatively new thing. Um, so it's only in Chrome at the moment. Um, and uh, then uh, this is more the object model. Um, and we can see there are uh, a few uh, red items. The SCTP transport uh, Harold did in Chrome, so we have one implementation of this. We had none last year, uh, but we um, uh, and we do have uh, most of the ICE transport. RTC ICE transport is in Chrome and uh, uh, getting. Um, well, hopefully, we'll have more progress on that. DTLS transport now has been done one implementation, and then the sender and receiver. Uh, sorry, receiver tran and transceiver. Um, the main missing thing there, I guess, is set coded preferences, which is only in Chrome. And we, of course, have had the issues relating to stop, which I think we figured out now, right? Figured out the spec side. Yeah. From the spec side, but not yet. Right. But but it's it's not yet. Yeah. Um, and this is uh, the remainder here. So, data channel is in pretty good shape, with the exception of priority, which uh, Howard will be talking about. Um, I guess we still have uh, only only can insert DTMF in Chrome. Um, yeah. I think it was you had some concerns about that UN we talked about, um, but otherwise green. And then RTC error, which just uh, came in relatively recently in Chrome. Yeah. We have it. That, oh, you're having it too. So some progress there. Um, so I guess the overall impression I wanted to say is this: this looks a lot better than last year. Um, and we at least, in particular, have one implementation of the vast majority of things, which enables other implementations to get started. Um, and then Yanni Bar will talk about the problem areas. What do we do? Do we some of these things may never get done, and that's okay. We can rip it out. Mm -hmm. um, but overall, I'd say the picture from a confluence point of view is pretty good, especially compared to last year. Um, okay. Yeah, so I, basically, um, I think we're making progress there, and then Jan Iver will have to talk about the stuff that we're basically not making progress on, we just plucked it out and you know, say, rip it out of the stuff. Okay, uh, we just talked about the simulcast playground stuff, the loopback, um, and then uh, I think some of these things, um, these are working with decisions. Um, for simulcast, I guess the item we just took was the loopback test, and then continued work on the uh, interop uh, testing point of view with the SFUs. Um, the, the, the question was like, where do we put the bar? Do we keep adding a lot of uh, 
uh, all the, the vendors that want to have the XFU testing, should we add them into Kite? Well, they, they always can contribute right. back, but for right. us, where do we draw the line? Is the five people we have right now enough, plus including Intel, right? Like you know, once you have GT, Nidus, Media Soup, uh, yeah. uh, and so on in Intel, is it enough to, to say if those work, we, we're good? Or? Well, just from my point of view, we, we I think of, stop somewhere, right? yeah. uh, I think you know some of these things are representative of approaches to SFUs. Mm -hmm. Like, for example, Jitsi is very similar in the way it does things to other ones. I don't think you have to have them all. Mm -hmm. You've kind of got the different camps are represented there. So you understand if you do it similar to the way this one works, you'll have similar results. You know, in a similar results. Okay. So the, the most, most important thing is to have one. Yeah. Right. One is always the big. Right. Well, the first well, now, step, right? now we have four. Now we have four. Yep. So there's consensus that simulcast testing is like roughly good enough now? Uh, well, or so we're, we're we're getting, we're getting, we'll have some people talking to developer feedback. Okay. Um, I don't want to. I don't want to put words in their mouth, but I think overall there are a bunch of people who will talk about the uh, challenges of transitioning from Plan B and Black Lab. Let's put it that way. So, so I don't know that simulcast is necessarily their only issue, right? Yeah. That's that whole. So we have consensus when we have all players needed for testing simulcast as well. We just need to finish to integrate and publish the test, which include the previous action and then right. like, and a few other yeah. stuff. Yeah. Um, um, speaking of which, I have my test page training right now, so the oh, point okay. of break if you want to see it. Okay, cool. So we can, we're uh, approaching, uh, actually we're at 10 o'clock, so we're about to take a break. Um, so anyway, just to summarize, uh, we have the simulcast discussion, we have the future of risk discussion. Um, my, what I'm trying to present to you is I think otherwise we seem to be on track for the spec and for, from a confluence implementation point of view. Um, are there anybody who wants to present a Different point of view. So, uh, and maybe we will cover this later, but maybe to turn that into um, <coughs> follow up uh, next steps until we get to PR what needs to happen. Right. We need to close the issue, so we will close some today, but right. we need to close them all. I mean, at least all the non editorial ones, right. including the one marked with PR that we need right now. Uh, we need to produce a document that uh, reflects all these changes and bring it uh, to the director for approval with a transition request that demonstrates that we did what we said we should do. Once we are in that uh, new candidate recommendation, which if you want to stick to our schedule is our final candidate recommendation, which means we are not going to bring substantive changes to the document anymore. We get a period of 60 days during which uh, that we have to pass no matter what before going to propose a condition. And during that period, that's the time where we will need to focus on demonstrating interoperability. Uh, when we are green, we think it's all right. When we are not, we either have to make it right by bribing the implementers, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> uh, or we need to have a good story as to why we think, yeah, we're well, not exactly that, but it's if I remember correctly, it doesn't have to be 100%, right? It certainly doesn't have to be 100%, yeah, right. yeah. but we have to show reasonable confidence that this is not fiction, yeah. but so mostly... Just to be clear though, uh, so our goal is to do all this by March 2020, right? Well, technically our goal is to have done that two months ago, since we were supposed to go to PR uh, two weeks ago. Think of back in time, so... But, 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 but I think... At least my current goal is for us to get to proposed recommendation before the end of the year. Okay. So that kind of talks about Singapore being kind of the last important test for push, meeting yeah. for the push, right? Okay. And uh, to try to have the opportunity to have a lot of people in the room to gather the data that allow us to show with enough confidence that is tested enough. Yeah. But who is going to be there? The usual the Asian IPF are not as well as ten no, no. no. March is that March is that Uber, so that's a lot easier. No, no. Yeah. I'm not sure. I do know that Harold will be there again. <laughs> yes. So anybody from the WPC or in Singapore? Yeah. yeah. Uh, well maybe twenty or some, but they, they won't be around for that particular. Okay. You and Eric? 
Uh, to this okay. Yeah, because March March would be would be Vancouver, right? So that's a lot easier for people. On March is like Vancouver, but together that's so depressing. <laughs> Something went wrong, like Vancouver in March and Madrid in July. Exactly. Right. <laughs> Should have been the other way around. So, so one thing, though, not to jump ahead, but uh, assuming there, we mentioned uh, we might hear some people have trouble moving from Plan B, and maybe we should leave open uh, possibility we might need to put in something about compatibility, like the compatibility. Uh, uh, it's deeper, yeah. Mm. I mean, we'll we'll have to listen to the developer feedback, right. but there are there are, I, I've heard there are, there are some legacy uh, issues. But they may not necessarily be W three C ish. Okay. So um, we are taking a break till ten thirty. Okay. Um, we can all look at uh, following this demo. Yeah. I will be closing the recording and I will start it afterwards. Uh, yeah, pause it and we'll come back.